In today's episode of Unwind Your Mind Back to God, we bring to you two sections, three and four, from chapter one of book one, Laying the Foundation. The names of the sections are Two Voices and God is a Pure Idea, as is Christ. Two Voices Hi, David. I feel sometimes as if two persons are living in me at the same time. One that I feel as I, who is very quiet and simply exists with no thoughts. The I who becomes joy. And the other one who pushes me and tries to take me off my path. I have everything under control. Sometimes I feel like a butterfly flying against the wind. I want to say, stop bothering me now. In these moments, I understand what people mean when they talk of the devil being a person. It really seems as if somebody is talking to me from inside. Can you please tell me if this is a normal step on the spiritual path? Beloved one, what you speak of is common on the spiritual journey, for often the ego seems to literally be a voice which is heard in one's mind. The ego always speaks first and can seem pushy because it always has an agenda or a form outcome for what it thinks it wants. It does not know what it wants, nor does it really think. For the ego has no unified goal and no power of real thought. The ego is just an unreal stream of pretend thoughts. And it is a joy to pay the stream no mind. It is important to be firm in commitment or attentiveness to the guidance of the spirit within and to the still state of being beyond all words that is the real I you experience at times. This is what you are doing when you say or think, stop bothering me now. A version that I seemed to use was Get thee behind me, Satan. The book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 8. The form matters not, for in a moment of temptation, it is the willingness to be still, or to hear only God's voice that matters. And God's voice is our voice in Christ. Thanks be to God for leading the way. All glory to the one that love David. God is a pure idea, as is Christ. Hi, David. I live in Australia. I continue to read from your Awakening Mind site with great interest. It is so helpful and much appreciated. I notice that you do not seem to judge the ego, or at least the ego takes a back seat in your writings. Other sites emphasize it all differently. In a recent post, this point was made. If you believe that you know what love is and that you can of yourself forgive, or you have something that others do not have, and you can give it to them, like love, you are believing that you are God. As long as you think that the world is real and the body is alive, you believe that you are God. When I first read the course, God completely disappeared. I found myself thinking, that there is no God. So shall we see God as completely made up? The Course does say 
that even God is an idea. The ancient Gnostics used to be of the opinion that when one has transcended, one sees that you are that. To my way of thinking, that is our very essence. We become God. Love is what you are. According to the above boast, is one just being arrogant to think this way? Like a no-win situation? Beloved one, forgiveness clears the way for remembrance of God, so that that is always the focus. Until the mind releases the error of ego, the fear of a make-believe God is buried deep in the unconscious mind. In this respect, it takes forgiveness or release of the entire ego belief system before the memory of God's love can return fully into awareness. God is a pure idea, as is Christ. When the mind is emptied of false concepts and beliefs, the pure idea eternal, and perfect. I am as God created me. Workbook Lesson 110 is another way of saying, love is what you are. I am grateful that the website has been helpful for you. Thanks for writing, and I hope to see you soon. Love always.